what's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about gun laws in the UK. I think here in America, we're pretty well known for how unrestricted our gun laws are here and how easy it is to legally get a gun in the United States, especially compared to the rest of the world. Like here in America, you know, owning a gun is a right. The right to own a gun is literally built into our constitution. Everyone can do it. And, and then you can get permits to, to carry your gun in your car. If you get the proper permits, you can carry a gun hidden on your person. And, and from what I understand, this is not something that's normal everywhere in the world, particularly in the UK. So today, I wanna take a look at the details of what UK gun laws are like, compared especially to here in the United States. I think that'll be really, really interesting and honestly, maybe a bit eye-opening for me. So let's take a look. Guns are heavily restricted in the UK, but contrary to what many people believe, including many Brits, owning a firearm is not illegal. Oh, well, I, actually, I never actually thought that, to be honest. Um, I, I figured owning a gun <laughs> Maybe this is a really American like uh, way of thinking, but I actually figured uh, in other countries around the world, if you go through the proper processes, you can own a gun. Even if it's just for hunting or self-defense, those are the, the main reasons people have them here in the United States, but this is, a, this is already kind of challenging my way of thinking by saying, uh, in the UK, a lot of people aren't even sure living in the UK if it's legal to ever, like, buy and own a gun. Um, but apparently it is. And now, wow, this actually surprised me off the bat. Uh, let's, let's learn more. On average, Britain has 6.5 guns per 100 people, okay. compared to the USA, which has 101 guns per 100 people. <laughs> oh my god. Is that not, does that not say it all right there? But a lot of this is, oh man, I mean, what does this do to? Obviously the laws are probably the number one factor here in America. Like, the law says you can get a gun, and pretty easily. It, it varies state to state, but I've heard of people going to a gun store and buying their first gun ever in their life for the first time and getting it right there in the same day and bringing it home. Um, that is possible. Uh, so having a hundred, like, a <laughs> hundred and one guns for every hundred Americans that, so, not every American has a gun. I actually think this is more because, like, the Americans that do own guns tend to own a lot of guns, and this stat is a little skewed, but there's no, no dancing around the fact that in the UK, it's 6.5 guns per 100 people, and in America, it's 101 guns for 100 people. There's a gun for every American. I never, I've never had it laid out quite like this before. According to the Small Arms Survey, unlike the Americans with the Second Amendment, gun ownership in the UK is a privilege, not a right. Oh, I've never heard, talk about things I've never heard before. Uh, a privilege, not a right. As little Americans growing up, like you better believe we are taught, you know, about our constitution, about our rights, and we're taught growing up about the right to bear arms, the right to own a gun. You know, and it's just something that becomes like second nature to us. It's not strange to us. Um, and I've never heard it phrased as a privilege, not a right. But I kind of like that. <laughs> well, I'm really at odds with it, to be honest, because uh, here in America, the sort of the, the meaning behind owning a gun has really changed over time. I think back when it was in our original constitution, it was so that people could literally own guns and firearms because it was time a time of war and a time where you might need to uh practically defend yourself or overthrow your government like we we you know us americans were doing at the time and we needed weapons and the weapons have changed back then it took 10 minutes to reload your gun and shoot one bullet so and now you have all these super advanced firearms the the meaning of owning a gun has changed drastically Drastically, the guns we have now would be equivalent to like a, a thousand man army back when this law was written in America. 
So, yeah, the fact that it is a right to own a gun here, um, maybe, I, I actually think this is good to be open-minded and learn about different ways that, that other cultures approach this. In the UK, it's a privilege to own a gun, not a right. And I totally understand, I totally see where that's coming from. Totally. Whether or not this is the right approach is not up for debate in this video, but feel free to discuss it at length in the comments section. Right. Firearms control in the UK is among the toughest in the world, and oh. firearms offences continue to make up less than 0.2% of recorded crime. As you oh, I see, I did not know about a lot of this stuff. This <laughs> That's going to make this comparison even more fun. America, you know, owning a firearm, it's one of the easiest places to get a gun. In the UK, it's one of the hardest. I did not know that. And firearms offences continue to make up less than 0.2% of recorded crime. There as you, you go. would expect with... So and there you go. It, it's reflected in the crime as well. So, you know, do with that what you may right there. Slow gun ownership, gun-related deaths are incredibly rare. According to the Geneva Declaration of Armed Violence and Development, it stands at one death per million people per year. Wow. The UK population is around about 56 million people, and that only adds up to around 50 to 60 gun homicides annually. I'm scared. <laughs> I would be scared to look up the statistics in the United States. There's no way it's anywhere close to this low. No way. So right there, it's already a pretty stark statistical difference that uh, the difficulty of gun ownership is making in the UK, which is very eye-opening. I gotta say, I, I don't think this is this kind of thing is going to change anytime soon in the United States. People are very, very, very attached to their guns and the right to own a gun on an emotional level at this point, not on just not a practical, logical level. It's an emotional level as well at this point. Because people really, really like to exercise this right in the United States. And yeah, that's, that's really, really interesting. And uh, I, uh, well, I, I want to continue this and then get into a little bit more of my thoughts on the state of here in the United States and how easy it is to have a gun. The rules around gun ownership can vary depending on where you are in the UK, particularly in Northern Ireland, where oh. due to the Good Friday Agreement, the laws are much less restrictive and over 5% of the population own a firearm, though these gun owners are not permitted to transport their weapons to mainland Britain. Oh. So who, in general, can obtain a firearm? Okay. To possess or purchase a firearm, an individual in the UK must be assessed as not posing a threat to public safety by the... Okay, okay. So here we're hopping into... One of the most interesting parts of this whole video, I think, and that is who can get a firearm in the UK? Because apparently it is very difficult, and the assessment involved in determining who can get a gun is very strict, which I like. I like a lot, because here in the United States, our assessment of who can bear the responsibility of owning a gun is extremely loose. It's very vague. Any, almost anyone can get a gun, and that's probably one of the parts I disagree with the most. So I, I actually do want to see how it's done differently uh, in the UK. The police who act as the licensing authority. In addition, the individual must have a good reason to own a firearm and be able to demonstrate to the licensing authority that they require their firearm for work, sport or leisure on a regular legitimate basis. Right. So this is already a massive difference. Um, <laughs> oftentimes, like... Uh, it varies state by state in the United States, but you really don't have to have a reason to, to get a gun because it's a right. It's, it's in the law. It's in our Constitution. It's a right. They can't ask you, like, why do you want this gun? The answer is because it's my right to own it. So give it. And then they pretty much have to. Uh, it's, it's, you know, there's a little more steps than that. But just comparing it on this basis of in the UK, they make sure you're of sound mind. They make sure you have a legitimate reason. They ask you why you want it. There's a lot more barriers to entry, which again, I like. I like that. I think that's reasonable. Such as being a member of a target shooting club. The reason the police are the licensing authority is because they possess local information that helps inform their judgment. Mm. And discretion over what constitutes a good reason is often left up to chief officers. Okay. Well, so here in the United States, maybe this is the uh, American in me uh, coming out. Um, most people get guns for self-defense. Peace of mind. I think that's, like, there's people who get it for hunting and for target practice, but a lot of people these days, especially, 
get a gun for what they would say, oh, it's for self-defense. It's just so I have one, just in case. Hope I never have to use it, but I'd rather have one and not need it than need it and not have one. That's like the number one reason. And I'm, I'm, you know, I've accepted that, you know, and I, I, may, I think this is like my American upbringing, but I'm, I'm at peace with that in a way. The only thing I am not at peace with is, you know, you don't have to demonstrate your competency of, of uh, operating the gun. You don't have to pass a skill test, a knowledge test. You don't have to recertify that you are of sound mind and sound ability every year. Those kinds of things should absolutely be standard process here in America. And it sounds like that's a lot more close to, to how it's done in the UK, actually. So I really like this. To own a firearm in the UK, a person must undergo a strict vetting procedure, which includes interviews, visits to the person's property, criminal record checks, and references from friends. Oh my god. Uh, th yeah, this is totally different. This is... I thought that was the end. They're still going. It's inc This is inc an incredible amount of steps. You need references? They gotta visit your home? Uh, interview you? This, I've never heard of this before. In addition, the applicant's GP may be contacted. Oh. Once a firearm license is issued and paid for, the licensed individual must store their gun securely to avoid access by any unlicensed person. Right, what right, firearms right. may be licensed in the UK? Unless to wow, so that was the um, process for determining who can get one. That's so much more difficult. And so much more strict, so much more particular about who can get it. That's a massive difference between the UK and the United States. Wow. Declared specially dangerous by the firearms dangerous... Oh, okay, and this is what firearms are okay. What kind of firearms? Okay. Air weapons rules of 1969. Low-powered air weapons are generally not licensed in England and Wales. That means okay. that if you purchase one of these, you do not require a license sure. in order to possess it. Sure, sure, it is sure. often said that handguns are outright banned, which is not strictly true. An individual may own long-barreled revolvers and long-barreled pistols, which are defined with a barrel of at least 30 centimetres in length, and that the firearm is at least 60 centimetres long. So, in the UK, there are handguns, but they have to be really big? They have to be really big and long? Uh, what, what's the reasoning behind that, I wonder? So that you can't, uh, you can't conceal it very easily? Is that, is that the purpose? Long-barreled single-shot firearms of any caliber and semi-automatic pistols of 22 rimfire caliber are permitted with a firearm certificate. Okay. Those that do not meet these criteria would be considered a pistol in UK law and are effectively banned, with the exception of wow. muzzle-loading pistols, including muzzle-loading revolvers, which are permitted as long as they meet the criteria set forth in the regulations. All of <laughs> you can you can get a you can get a ye olde pistol that you like uh, like load with a stick and a wad of gunpowder <laughs> that's okay um i mean that's what they were uh, back to what i was saying that's what they were imagining in the in the united states when what gun what gun gun ownership actually meant back in the day um okay so i didn't know that so many pistols were outlawed in the uk illegal I think pistols are of all shapes and sizes, especially small ones. Very, very small pistols are probably one of the number one most purchased weapons in the in the United States because you can conceal them because that is a right that you can have in the United States, having a tiny gun. And then you do need a permit, a concealed carry permit. But, you, you know, that's just a little more effort and you can carry around a tiny little gun with you. Anywhere you want to go. That, that is a thing in the United States. The pistols are prohibited in Great Britain. Shotguns are legal on a shotgun certificate as long as they can't hold more than three shotgun shells, including the one oh. in the chamber, if it's a pump action or semi-automatic shotgun. Oh, interesting. Limiting, like, the amount of ammo that can fit in it. I think that there are some, believe it or not, there are some restrictions on gun ownership in the United States, like how much ammo it can carry is limited, um, how fast uh, the gun can fire, like automatic weapons are limited. Um, so there's, a, you know, nothing compared to the UK, but there's some limitation. However, 
Shotguns with a detachable magazine or larger fixed magazine are still permitted, but you'll have to obtain a Section 1 firearm certificate. Oh, wow. Rifles are also permitted. These are defined by UK law as a rifled firearm with a barrel longer than 30 centimetres or okay. 12 inches, okay. and the total length of the rifle must be longer than 60 centimetres or 24 inches. And, and, again, and again, I'm having to remember, like, this is all under the pretext that you went through a very, very rigorous, very intense screening process. They might have visited your home, made sure you're of sound mind, and you had to give a really good reason for why you're owning this. Like, I, I, I'm forgetting there's all of that. And then there's all these particular, like, uh, set of uh, specifications of what guns you can even own after that. And it must also not fall under the classification of a long barrel revolver or pistol. Rifles okay. are permitted in any caliber size as long as it doesn't meet the definition of self-loading or pump action. Semi-automatic huh. or pump action rifles are only permitted at a 22 rimfire caliber. Okay. What might surprise you is that under UK law, it is legal for you to own the following weaponry. With okay. the correct licensing, of course. The M&P 1522, which is based on the AR-15. H&K 416, semi-automatic oh. 22. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah, I am surprised. Like these look, these are super advanced, modern, auto, like, I don't know if these are automatic, semi-automatic weapons. Like these are like, <laughs> I'm a little surprised you can own these in the UK actually. Two rimfire caliber MP5, Ruger 1022, Beretta ARX 160, wow. and you can even own an Uzi as long as it's a 22 rimfire caliber. I'm surprised. So next time someone says that the UK banned guns, we didn't, but we do strongly restrict and control who can own firearms and what firearms can be owned. Right. And generally speaking, culturally, we don't have the same affinity or interest in firearms as our American cousins. Yeah. Whether that's a good thing yeah. or a bad thing. I'll leave up to you. So let me know. <laughs> oh boy, that's a whole can of worms. Yeah, I mean, he's absolutely correct. Like here in the United States, completely different attitude toward guns. Although there's a lot of people in the United States who share, share probably a similar school of thought of like, oh, this is insane. We should be like the UK. I, I, there's a lot of things I learned here today about how the UK handles gun ownership that I really like, and I would like to see incorporated into the American system. But uh, the narrator is absolutely right. Like, it is a way of American culture at this point. Uh, the right to bear arms, the right to own a gun, to, to hide, conceal a gun, um, and to buy them pretty easily. Like, that is such an American thing, I'm re starting to realize. Like, really, really an American thing. Whereas most Americans growing up here just are like, well, that's just normal. That's like, anything else would be weird. Uh, but I'm starting to think maybe we're the weird ones. <laughs> or at least we could definitely, definitely incorporate some of these things from the UK system. So this is actually fascinating. Like, honestly fascinating. Because uh, I don't really have any exposure to how gun law and gun ownership is handled in other parts of the world. So this was eye-opening. Because it, this, the UK law is so far on the other end of the spectrum. It is so difficult to get a gun. You need, man, you are interviewed and passed certifications and questioned. And they might visit your home and ask why you need it. And wow. And, and, and I like that. I like a lot of things about that, honestly. So I, I actually enjoyed learning about this quite a bit. Quite a bit, actually. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well. Feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment, perhaps with your thoughts on uh, gun law in the UK versus the United States. That'd be very interesting to hear about. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to the UK and UK culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.